What is going on everyone? So today I have a little tip and trick for everyone. So when I first built my Ryzen setup, I had uh, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM uh, for a speed of 3200 uh, megahertz. So, and I always noticed when I was booting or when I'd go to tweak uh, the CPU or whatever the case may be, I always noticed the speed of it was never close to 3200. It was always like 2133, 2100, or, or you know something really low, like a thousand off. And I never quite knew what it was. And to be honest, at that time, I didn't really care. Um, to me, I was just like, yeah, whatever, not a problem. But since I redid my setup, you know, I really wanted to dig into why this was going on, and if I paid for you know X speed RAM, why am I not getting it when I'm running benchmarks or things of that nature? Because a thousand makes a big difference, and that's why people spend extra money to get you know 3200, 3600 speed RAM instead of the lower values. So a big thing that I was reading on a lot of forums and whatnot was that the X399 uh, boards. You know, mine specifically is the Asus Strix uh, X399E gaming motherboard. They do have a Rampage, and of course, other manufacturers have that setup as well. Uh, but for me specifically, people were saying how the RAM was just never getting to their top speeds. Now, this board is rated for RAM that has OC speeds much higher, especially than 2100. And I had no idea as to why this was happening. So I dug into it a bit. And a couple things repeatedly came up. So one of the things was the XMP profiles, um, which is basically a uh, automatic RAM overclocking profile, is more Intel based and Intel centric than AMD. It is on my board. I can choose it to set up my RAM profile as an XMP profile, but it's adapted to AMD. It's not made specifically for it. So there can be a lot of issues with incompatibility, plugging in wrong values. So one of the main tips was just to stay away from that. And if you know exactly what RAM you bought and what voltage it is, you can manually go in there and do it and have a little more control over what you're actually doing. Because what would happen, I would turn on the XMP profile, my CPU, <laughs> my computer would try to post and it would just power cycle three, four times. And then I would come up with a screen saying uh, RAM value invalid and uh, press F1 to uh, get into the BIOS. So I'd go back into the BIOS, hit uh, auto or whatever it was, and auto would bring me back to 2133. And I was getting really frustrated with it. And then finally, I, I found a post somewhere on the ASUS uh, forums basically saying that there was two things you had to look out for. One, if you bought RAM specifically for Ryzen and specifically for Threadripper, you still could have a problem, right? It just seems to be like they have, it's really wonky, it's really just inconsistent of what is going on with the RAM and how the boards are managing it and how the boards are reading it and trying to give it these values. So even if you bought RAM specifically for Threadripper, you're not, uh, you're not out of the woods just yet. This could still happen to you. You could post and look into your settings and still see your RAM is slower than what it was spec'd at. So I know I had 3200 RAM. I know that my voltage was 1.35 volts. So what I eventually ended up doing was incrementally stepping up my speed of my RAM while just putting the voltage at 1.35, which is exactly what it's rated for. And if you do it, if you step it up little by little, you know, you have a chance to test stability, you can run IDA64, you can run, you know, a ton of other stress and load tests to make sure that your RAM and your system is stable. Because I had a couple tests that I did that my computer posted and I logged in no problem, but I was trying to stream and I would get blue screens. I got two of them within the course of like half an hour. Even though it posted, and even though I could run um, a small read or write test, and it would be fine, it would pass and give me the numbers. So I then obviously had to dial it back. So you could go in there, you could set your RAM volt to 135, and then go right to what it's spec'd at, but more than likely that's probably not gonna be the end all be all. You might run into issues, you may not. It seems to be a crapshoot at this point because, uh, it's happening with G-Skill Trident RAM, which I know works in this system, the Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM, which I have, which 
you know, is listed as compatible RAM. It's not made specifically for it, but it is compatible with it. Seems to be across the board. So what finally I ended up doing is I started at the 2133, which I knew was stable, and I kept going up. Kept going up and kept going up until I couldn't go up anymore and had it become unstable. And what that left me with is, so my RAM, again, is spec at 3200, and I ended up getting it to about 3000. I think it's uh, 2933 megahertz is what it finally ended at. I could get it one more step, but then it was less stable and I'd much rather have it just a little bit slower and more stable than unstable and a little bit faster. So I'm gonna show you where it is on my board so that you can look uh, on yours. On any Asus board, it's probably very similar. You know, I don't know the BIOS layout for Gigabyte or uh, MSI or the other board manufacturers. I'm sure it's very similar, but this will be for mine. Um, and I'll show you exactly where the thing, where it's set at and how to get there. So at least for my Asus X399e, uh, this is where I had to go. So your main screen is just going to tell you your BIOS version. I did make sure I was on the latest BIOS, which mine was from January 3rd. Um, it tells me right here that I have 64 gigabytes installed and my memory frequency right now is 2933. Where you gotta go is you gotta go Extreme Tweaker, and actually memory frequency is right here. So I could get it to run on uh, 3066, but it wasn't stable. 3200, it wouldn't even post. So we left it at 2933. But the next thing that happened is you had to go to, you had to go right here, DRAM AB voltage and DRAM CD voltage and basically the CD and AB voltage is on your board being that there's eight slots uh, There's an A and B channel and a C and D channel So if you're running four sticks or you're running eight sticks or whatever your configuration is make sure you're changing it for the correct layout For me every spot is populated so I had to change it on both So I knew my voltage was rated for 1.35 So that's what I typed in and as you can see right now it's at you know, 1.329 and 1.329. It, it's gonna fluctuate and that's fine. Everything else I just left as auto because there wasn't anything that I really had to do to mess with it. And this works just fine. Um, it posts, it works. And again, you can, if you had 3600 RAM, maybe you can get, you know, the 3200 or the uh, 3333 working on your system. It's really gonna be a trial and error because right now it doesn't seem like there's very much of a consistency factor it's pretty much just yeah sometimes it works and not nah, sometimes it don't work and I have no idea why but anyway for the Asus board once you're done with that you can hit exit save changes and reset obviously I have not made any changes and you can go from there uh, but this is to get your your speed of your RAM back up to where it should be or at least closer to that help you get a little bit more performance out of your system and uh, get you back to where you gotta be. So anyway, this was just a short little video on uh, your RAM speeds in your Threadripper build. Uh, and I'm sure you can apply this to a lot of other things if, you're, if your RAM isn't coming out at the right voltage. You know, baby step it, know your specs of your RAM, and go from there. All right guys, thanks.